This is a topic that I felt uh, really needs some coverage on my show, and I'm surprised I have never done a video on this before. And if I have done a video on it, I only covered it very briefly. This is a tour of the Pulse Audio Volume Control, right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Okay, let's get started. For some of you, when you right-click on your volume control, you may have an option to choose a mixer. And um, up upon opening this, you will either get uh, the Ulsa mixer or the uh, Pulse Audio volume control. Uh, I'm going to show you how to launch this from the terminal, and then uh, we'll make a shortcut on our panel here, uh, because I've actually included a shortcut to Pulse Audio Volume Control in my distribution, mcol, for the reason that this is something that you may use regularly once you have a full understanding of what this software does. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And we will invoke Pulse Audio Volume Control by typing in PAVU Control. All right. And here it is. And you're going to notice right here, uh, we have a playback option. This shows all of the items that you have on your system here on the playback tab that's actually playing audio. So let's go ahead and let's open up my web browser right here and uh, I'll even open up Dead Beef and I will have a number of things running here so that you can see here that we can independently control the volumes of the different items that are playing audio, such as the Flash Player in Chrome. Okay, I have the audio turned down. So this is something you could troubleshoot. Let's say you go to YouTube and all of a sudden, you, for some reason, you got the volume turned up on the video, but you still don't hear any audio. You might want to check what's being played back from your web browser. Okay, and you can go in and uh, you can change that volume. I went and changed that audio clip wasn't paying, playing very long there. But uh, you can go ahead and change the audio, and you'll notice that the audio meters are going to move. Okay, I have Dead Beef playing, a, um, playing an audio file here. Okay, and when that's playing and you adjust the volume. So you can control the volume independently, and this is a really nice feature in Linux in that uh, instead of having a dumbed down uh, control for managing your audio, this is quite comprehensive. The recording tab covers uh, any um, devices or programs that is using recording. And in the case of uh, today's exercise, you're sh seeing that uh, the microphone is registering the input from my Samson CO1U condenser microphone. And uh, I can adjust how much gain there is to the microphone. I like it right about here. It works, seems to work best for me. Uh, let's go ahead and minimize some of this stuff so that we can remain focused on today's exercise here. Okay, your output devices here, this is where you will manage where your audio is routed. In my case, I'm wearing headphones right now. But if I were to have HDMI plugged in, there would be an option in this menu. I don't have HDMI plugged in right now. Or uh, I would choose speakers. I'm on a laptop right now at the moment. It's saying it's unavailable because obviously I have the headphones plugged in. So when headphones are plugged in, speakers aren't going to work. But HDMI would be an option in the output devices tab if I had my uh TV hooked up to the laptop, which I don't at the moment. Okay, let's take a look at input devices here. 
Okay, now, um, you're going to see that there are two devices here that are going off. Um, let's go ahead and silence one. That's the built-in audio uh, from my laptop. So my laptop microphone was also capturing audio, but my screen capture software is only listening to what's coming in through my condenser microphone. Okay, so you would use the input devices here for managing your audio. So let's say you hop on to Mumble. You can hear everybody just fine, but for some reason they can't hear you. This is where you would go in and you would make sure that your microphone is listed here and you would adjust the gain to it. And you would know that it's working because you would see the meters receiving your sound. And then, of course, there are advanced options for uh, latency. Really, I've never had to mess with this particular feature, but it is there if there is some latency with your audio. Now for the configuration section. This is very, very important because if you, for instance, let's say you want to use HDMI and you want to uh, hook your laptop computer uh, to your television and you want to have that audio be able to go out to your uh, television speakers. The one thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have the drivers installed for your hardware. Otherwise, it's not going to be detected by this utility. Okay, you're going to see that I have two sections for built-in audio here. Okay, uh, and I have one for my uh, condenser microphone. Okay, and in the built-in, this one with the analog stereo duplex, I can configure this for output only, input only, or duplex, both, or I can shut it off. That's what those are. You may have other options depending on the hardware uh, that you have installed on your machine. And then this next built-in audio at the top, this is where you configure HDMI. So this is something you will want to make sure that you have set up properly. And as you can see, my hardware supports digital stereo, surround 7.1, and surround 5.1. You need to select one of these if you're going to use HDMI. And then once you have one of those selected, then you're going to need to go into your output devices and you're going to need to specify uh, you're going to need to specify that you are using HDMI with the driver and then under playback you would adjust the volume for whatever audio is being piped out through HDMI. All right, and uh, that's just a simple example. I figured I would go over this with you guys because I haven't seen uh, very many videos uh, covering this topic. Pretty much that is all I have on the Pulse Audio Volume Control. Um, I guess I have a little bit of time to cover something extra here, and this is something I also use myself. Um, where Pulse Audio lets you um, listen to more than one sound device at the time, you also have a control for ULSA, which is the Advanced Linux Sound Architecture. And you have a control for that built into your system, and it's easily accessed by opening a terminal. Let's go ahead and close this here, and then just run it. A-L-S-A-M-I-X-E-R. Okay, and then here within the ULSA mixer, you can actually configure things through ULSA. Personally, I prefer the Pulse Audio volume control, but you have these options here. So, for instance, if I wanted to, uh, if I wanted to, uh, you know, mess with my uh, microphone audio, you can see, you can choose different uh, sound attachments. 
Okay, and you can see where I have my gain set up for my USB microphone. So this is handy to have this, and I actually open this up when uh, just before doing some recording on Mumble, uh, just because this is just easier for me to have a terminal that I can just open and quickly close, and then you know set it and forget it kind of thing. So you do have the ability of using the uh, Ulsa mixer if you wish to use it, but the but the thing is the most important thing is uh really getting comfortable with pulse audio since that ships with uh most linux distributions in common use today all right and uh something you can do is uh you can usually go in your menu and just do a search for it by typing p a v u control all right, and it's giving us an option to run it. But you can also make a shortcut if your volume control, like mine, for instance, here, when I select to open Mixer, it will open up the Pulse Audio volume control for me automatically, okay? But some volume controls will not do that. So I know the volume control that ships with mcol uh, doesn't do that out of the box. I had to download and install a separate one from the AUR. Um, but you can actually make a shortcut for that, which is not very hard to do. On XFCE, you can right-click on your desktop and just choose to create a launcher. We'll give it a name. Oh, I can't spell today, can I? Ha 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 ha. It's all right. We'll pick an icon for it. All right, and now you'll see I've created a shortcut. And then you can just drag this uh, to your panel. See that red line that just appeared if you're using XSCE? Just drag that and drop it and create a launcher on your panel. And now you have a quick launch to your Pulse Audio volume control when you need it. And uh, I you know, prefer having quick access to this because I find myself using this an awful lot. Uh, I like that I can just go in and I can have multiple sound sources playing at one time. And, uh, for instance, I could be having a discussion on Mumble, and I might want to have soft music playing in the background at the same time. This handy little gem lets me do that. I can have soft background music while having a discussion with everybody on Mumble. It's really cool. And I love the fact that uh, Linux gives you the ability to uh, have precise control over all of your audio. So definitely take your time to experiment with the Pulse Audio volume control. Uh, you're going to find that 90% of any audio problems on your Linux system can be corrected just by going in here, looking at your configurations, possibly any output devices or input devices, checking your output devices and making sure those are uh connected properly and that needs to be on uh headphones haha -ha. all right you also need to maybe check your recording if you're doing any recording and then of course playback where you can independently uh mix all uh individual uh channels that you have uh running audio at present well that's all that i have on this i'm not sure what i'm going to be covering next but i'm sure i'm going to have something equally exciting until then Peace out.